we Muslims, we unfortunately want to sit on the Quran like a cobra. Neither do we read it, neither do we want the others to read it. And many of the Muslims, they quote the Quran, saying that Quran cannot be given to the non-Muslim because Allah says in the Quran, and they quote Surah Waqiyah, chapter number 56, verse number 77 to 80, where it says that this is the Quran which is kept in a tablet well preserved, who none shall touch except those who are pure. It is from the Lord of the worlds. And many Muslims say that, see, the Quran says, none shall touch the Quran except those who are pure. And the non Muslims, they are najis, they are napak, they are unclean. That is the reason these non Muslims they cannot touch the Quran. If we read the Nuzul Quran, why were these verses revealed? We come to know that the mushriks and the kuffars of Makkah, they laid the allegation that this Quran, Nauz Billah, are the words of the Satan, the words of Shaitan. Allah reveals this, that none can touch. The Arabic word used is Kitab Maknoon. That means a book well preserved. Kitab Maknoon. This Kitab Maknoon does not refer to this glorious Quran. This book, Quran, in Arabic is called as a Mus'haf. What the Quran is referring to, if we cross reference, of Surah Buruj, chapter number 85, verse number 21 22, which says that Allah has kept the Quran in a tablet well preserved in Lohim Hafuz. So, this Quran, which is being referred, is referred to the Lohim Hafuz, the tablet well preserved, the book well preserved. It's not talking about this Quran. Because if it was this Quran, and if the Arabic word used mutahari, that it means that only body cleanliness, then any non-Muslim can easily go to the marketplace and buy a copy of the Quran for 150 rupees, for 200 rupees, for four dollars, for five dollars, and the Quran will be proved wrong. The mutahari word used does not refer only to body cleanliness. It refers to a person who's pure in heart, in mind, in soul, person who's sinless, referring to the angels, that none will be able to touch the Quran in the tablet well preserved, Lohim Mefuz, except the angels, trying to give a reply to the allegation of the mushriks of Makkah, that this Quran was not the words of the Satan. So this verse of the Quran does not indicate that a person should be pure in body. If he is, it's good, it is mustaf, alhamdulillah, but it's not a must. And furthermore, even if it was a requirement, imagine, even if it was a requirement, if a person's shirk can be removed from his life, even if you consider this as a small mistake to touch the Quran without wudu, yet removing the shirk, which is the biggest sin in Islam, to do a small mistake, to remove the biggest sin in Islam, it is yet a very good bargain. But the scholars of Tafsir, they say, this verse does not refer and does not indicate that a person should be in wudu to touch the Quran. But being in wudu is good. It is mustab, alhamdulillah, but not a must. There are many people, many Muslims who tell me, okay, Brother Zakir, give the Quran to the non-Muslim, but only give the English translation. Don't give the Arabic text. Or give the Hindi translation, the Urdu translation. I've got no problem if someone only gives the translation of the Quran, but I personally prefer giving the Arabic text along with the translation. Why? Because the translation is the work of a human being. And no human being is perfect. 
as I mentioned earlier, that no translation is perfect. And if there is a mistake in the translation, it will not be attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we check it up with the Arabic text, besides the translation, we can easily verify that if there's a mistake in the translation, it is the work of the human being and not of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I personally prefer giving along with the translation the Arabic text so that if there is a mistake, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he'll not be responsible. It is the responsibility of the translator. And furthermore, if Allah holds me responsible, I will be in good company. I'll be in the company of the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because if you read the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he dictated letters to non-Muslim kings in which he dictated verses of the Quran. He told the Sahabas, he dictated letters to non-Muslim kings in which he dictated verses of the Quran. He sent letters to Nicholas of Abyssinia, to Emperor Heracles, Emperor of Persia, King of Yemen, King of Egypt. Many of these kings, Alhamdulillah, they accepted Islam. But some of them, they even tore the letter. Some of them even trampled it beneath their feet. Imagine the verses of the Quran dictated by the Prophet. They were torn by these kings, and some of them even trampled it beneath their feet. And one such letter is available in the Koptaki Museum in Turkey, in which the Prophet had dictated the verse of the Quran of Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, which says, Kul, ya hilal kitab. Say, O people of the book, Ta'alo ila kalimatin sawa im bayna baynakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. Wala nushika bihi shayyaw. That we associate no partners with him. Wala yattakhida baaduna baadun arba bin mundanillah. That we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. Pantawallo. If then they turn back. Fakulu shadu. Sayyid be witness. Be anna muslimun. That we are Muslims bowing our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse of the Quran was dictated to the non-Muslim kings by the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's yet available in the museum, the Koptaki Museum in Turkey. And I want to ask you the question. Today, there are about 14 million Arabs who are Coptic Christians, who are Christians since generations. I'm asking the question, which translation of the Quran will you give to these 14 million Coptic Arab Christians. Do you want to translate the Arabic Quran into Arabic again? You'll have to give the original text. To these Christian Arabs, who understand Arabic as a language, Arabic is a mother tongue, which translation will you give? Will you give the Urdu translation? Will you give the English translation? You have to give the original Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Arabic. That's the reason I personally prefer, along with the translation, give the original Arabic text. And the Quran was revealed for the whole of humankind, and the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent as a messenger to the whole of humankind.